This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. It was many years ago in the time of the Bible that they took him up to Calvary. Oh, to Calvary. They could have let him go, but instead they chose Barabbas just to set another criminal free. Just to set another criminal free. When they crucified the ever loving can master with compassion flowing from his eyes. Well, he said to a thief who was begging him for mercy that today, today I live in paradise. Mm, and I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, like the criminal on the cross. Praise God, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. No more to suffer loss. Well, he said I live in paradise. And he's taking care of the cost. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Like the criminal on the cross. Well, on the judgment day, when all the people gather around him and they wait to hear what he will declare, what he will there declare. will never ever be more intense anticipation that has ever happened anywhere. Anyway. When they call my name to defend my reputation, there is only one thing I can say. I'm a wretch, I'm a worm, I'm a no good sinner, but he said I'll save you anyway. Oh, and I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm saved. like the criminal on the cross. Praise God, I'm saved. I'm saved. No more to suffer loss. Well, he said I'd live in paradise. And he's taken care of the cost. Hallelujah, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved through Jesus. I am saved. Through Jesus, I am saved. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. His mercy showed the way. His mercy showed the way. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. No more for me to say. No more for me to say. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved in paradise today. For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all, Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus chapter 1 verses 1 to 7. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Every time you will away, no matter what you huh?
Hello, listener. You welcome to you decide your favorite program. With me here is my panelist, Pastor A Y A Bryant Coker, Agana Agana in Siri, and Michael Akwaba. My panelists, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. If you just joined us, we are discussing the sanctuary, its relevance, what it is, and how it is important to us. We have now arrived at what actually the dimensions are and what actually the the things involved, what actually could be seen there, what happened there. I want us to discuss the physical activities the physical activities, then probably after that we link it to their spiritual relevance, importance, or probably their meaning. Yes, so Michael. Okay. Before I talk about the physical um, elements of the sanctuary, I want us to be conscious of what we'll be reading online because people read a lot or have written a lot about these uh, components of the sanctuary, and much of the interpretations we have online are more of allegorical Okay. Picking this thing to mean this one, picking this thing to mean this one. But let's try to understand what actually the Bible says. And having understood what the Bible is saying, I think we can get a clearer picture of what the sanctuary means. First and foremost, when we talk about the sanctuary, there was a fence around it, as we all saw. And with the fence, there was a wider gate, which was only one to the sanctuary. As soon as you enter the sanctuary, there was an outer court mm. which the people of Israel on the day of atonement they all come and gather together on the daily uh, sacrifices one comes and deal with the high priest at that outer court when we come to the outer court also we had what we call an altar mm-hmm. with this altar it was made out of uh, brass Okay. and when someone comes to offer sacrifices to the Lord mm. upon the sins he or the family has done. This person kills the animal and mm-hmm. the priest takes the blood and some portions of the animal and sends to the altar. At this same altar court, we had what we call liver. Mm. And it was a pot or something of that sort containing water which was used for purifications okay. or your cleansing. Okay. Having dealt with these two elements at the within the outer court, there is um, the sanctuary itself, which was also divided into two. Yeah, okay. If you say the sanctuary itself, does it mean that the outer part of it is not part of the sanctuary itself? When we are talking about the sanctuary in itself, mm-hmm. That building, he was shown with the patterns. It mm. wasn't the outer court. We're not part sure. of the sanctuary itself. Sure. Okay. So that sanctuary in itself was divided into two, mm. which we have the holy place and the most holy place. Mm. And these are the elements in the holy place. And afterward, we move to the most holy place. Wow. That's the place that scares me. You could die at any second. You could if die you in the outer court. <laughs> <laughs> if you do not confess your sin, and yes. the high priest gets out of the most holy place, you will do so. But when you enter into the holy place, mm. you will see a lampstand. Okay. You will see a lampstand of seven branches. Mm-hmm. It is one of seven branches, which was daily burning. Also, there was an altar of incense. Mm. There was also a curtain dividing the holy place from the most holy place and also when we step into the most holy place there was a mercy seat the mercy seat yeah agana you want to come with some of the things i imagine that we were at the mercy seat sure. in yes. the most holy place yes. so the mercy seat it's more appropriately called the grace covering mm-hmm. it's really just a covering that sits on top of the ark of the covenant mm-hmm. okay and i think we can say that the whole of that inner chamber is important because of the covenant that we've been speaking about the covenant contained within the ark it serves as a picture of the throne of god okay the justice and truth and all that that and law 
that is the foundation of God's power. So you, you could see a chair. Is this like a chair? It's not like a chair. <laughs> Imagine chair? a box. A box. And on top of the box, mm-hmm. you have a cover, which mm-hmm. is what we call the mercy seat. Okay. 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 Yes. On top of that, on the left and the right side of this covering, at you the have, edges. At the edges, exactly. Cherubims. You have the cherubim, figures of two angels. Okay. Mm. Um, cherubim represent one of the highest order of angels in, in heaven. Wow. Who clasp their wings upwards so that so their wings join together exactly. Upwards. I think with angels, probably we could get a whole period to discuss we, angels. We probably yes. should. Yeah. We probably should. Mm-hmm. But, but so just between the angels, mm-hmm. between the angels was something very magnificent. It was a pulsating mass of light and energy which represented the glory of God himself. Wow. We call that the Shekinah glory of, of God. Mm. Most okay. true. Exactly. So this is probably one of the reasons you fear the most holy place because when the priest entered this place only once a year, he really entered into a very clear and powerful presence of the Almighty God. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So these are okay. basically the physical things we see yeah, in the outer was, courts. It was the left middle. with one, okay. the holy place, which mm-hmm. um, I forgot to um, talk about. There was a um, table of bread. The table the of show bread. bread. Show bread. Okay, yeah. bread. So did they put bread there? Who was daily. eating the daily. bread? Daily. Yes, well, so, Pastor, well, who was well, eating well, that bread? Let me maybe point something mm-hmm. as to what the sanctuary, as you're talking about the physical contents yeah. I'm talking about. I want us to have this idea of the comparative nature of the sanctuary. The sanctuary wasn't just made anyhow. Mm-hmm. It followed a pattern. And so whatever we're doing, we must have in mind the heavenly sanctuary as we compare it to the earthly sanctuary. Yeah. The earthly sanctuary was a tabernacle, mm. what we call a tabernacle. And then, like uh, my brother just pointed out, we had the outer court. The things that happened in the outer court were all sort of things preparing us. It was more of worship. You don't come before the Lord dirty, you know, soiled, so you had to clean, wash your hands, yeah. even before you offer the lamp or whatever, yeah. you must come before. So it was leading us. Now, you find out that in Hebrews 8, 1 and 2, it talks about, because when we talk about the sanctuary, we're going to talk about high priest mm. because it involves priestly ministry. Mm. Then we're going to talk about sacrifices mm. and then all the symbols. So he says in Hebrews 8, 1 and 2 that God pitched the sanctuary, not man. Mm-hmm. And so Moses was told to actually build it according to the pattern. You read Exodus fifteen seventeen, and then when you read what we read in uh, Hebrews nine eleven, it says the warning was: make sure you do it exactly after the pattern that you saw in heaven. So the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. You can see Revelation 15. See, they saw, and you will see that everything that we see in the earthly temple or the tabernacle, you will see the same thing in heaven. Yeah. The two apartments, as he said, the other court, there are two apartments. The heavenly one also has two apartments. And then you read that in Hebrews 9, 1 to 3. So the thing is, whatever we're talking about, the Bible depicts everything clearly. The earthly had first apartment and then the finishing. He has made the candlestick, the incense of altar, the show bread, and then yeah. the veil. You know, all these things, these things that we have in the earthly sanctuary are also in the heavenly sanctuary. Wow. Read, so you mean, Pastor, wait. Read mean, Revelation 4, yes. 1 to 5. You Revelation mean, 4, 4 1, to 5. 1 to 5. And then Revelation 8, 3. Okay. And you see. Okay. You want us to read it right yes. now? Yes. Okay. The earthly second apartment contains also what was seen in heaven. What? Revelation eleven nineteen. Even the second apartment, what was contained there, was also contained in 
the heavenly sanctuary. Yeah. So you see that it isn't anything that we can say that it was just imagination or something. All this that was in the earthly was just a depiction of what was in the heavenly sanctuary. All right. So we see that there was this message. We will come to what he was talking the throne room where we go to the holy place where we see it as God's throne, God's yeah. presence, God's All right. holiness. All right. It's time for us to go on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to see this spiritual connotations, the spiritual relevance and uh, meaning, importance of these physical things that we have mentioned as replica of the heavenly sanctuary. I am your host, Thomas Isaac. Thank you very much for coming today. My abled and seasoned panelists, Isaac Efriye, Mr. Agana Agana in Syria, and Pastor Koka. Thank you very much for coming today. But remember, in matters of faith, you decide. It was nothing but the truth, only truth comes from you. It was untrue. It was nothing but the truth, and it's all that you can do. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on 233-2087-04532 or 244-235017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana P.O. Box AF 595, Adenta Greater Accra Region, Ghana. We will expect your feedback. Welcome to Moment of Truth. My name is Pastor Amwa. I spoke to you some time ago on Jesus will come. And we were talking about the Israelites. They had arrived in Shittim on the plains overlooking the Jordan River. And they were looking at the River Jordan and seeing a whole lot of things. They had a string of victories behind them and they were really happy. And unfortunately for them, they didn't know that a trap had been set for them through Balaam and Balak. And it was a very simple trap, the trap that had taken David, that had taken Solomon, that had taken the sons of Seth, that had been tried on Joseph and a host of other Bible characters, was tried on them with much, much success. And so here we are, the Israelites have begun to worship Baal with the women of Moab. Now let me give you just a little more history. Now, the Moabites were supposed to be related to the Israelites. And 
if I could say that that God selected them and not other people, may have been a problem for them, which they found hard to deal with. And as the Israelites approached, their king, Balak, wanted to get rid of them, get rid of all the Israelites. And so he had sent for Balak. They had tried all schemes, but the only thing that worked was for them to sin against God because they knew that if the Israelites sinned against God, definitely God will deal with them. And so this scheme had been tried on them and the Israelites succumbed to it fully. Israelites, young men, virile and strong, handsome, here they were, sinning against God with Moabite women, day in, day out. Let's go to Numbers chapter 25, verse 4. And God says to Moses, Take all the leaders of Israel and kill them by hanging. Leave them publicly exposed in order to turn God's anger away from Israel. Numbers 25, verse 25 says, Moses issued orders to the judges of Israel. Each of you must execute the men under your jurisdiction who have joined in the worship of Baal Peor. And what happened that day? In one day, 24,000 had already died. My brother, my sister, we live in a terrible world. A world in rebellion against God. A world that refuses to obey his laws. A world that wishes away his laws. We have engaged in all kinds of things today. And people are doing all kinds of unimaginable things. You go on the internet and you are appalled by the immorality you see there. You read the newspapers and you are you are galled by the things you hear, the things you read in the newspapers that people are engaging in. Today, just this year, there's a story of a young secondary school boy who is trying to mate with a sheep in one of the towns here in my country. And what are they doing? When he did that, the sheep was bleating. So a young man rushed into the room and one thing led to another and this boy was arrested. Young boy. We are engaged in all kinds of things today. And we have reached the limit. We have surpassed all the evils in the days of Noah, which made God to bring a flood to destroy it. We have surpassed the evils of Sodom and Gomorrah, which made God to rain down fire and brimstone. This is your world and my world. On every continent, it is the same. There's no difference whatsoever. The society is falling apart. Homes are being shattered. The lives of millions are being ruined. Violence, crime, and every type of wickedness fills the earth. Just imagine it. Somebody has already done it. And while the world cries for more excitement, more indulgence, and tries to see that they can find ways and means of finding more exciting means of keeping themselves titillated, the churches preach forgiveness for continued sin. You go and confess God will forgive you. The preacher says to you, and our world is continually filled with all kinds of crime. God's word demands submission to the creator's authority and obedience to his moral law. But what do we see? People who are only interested in doing what is wrong. For that reason, you and I must awake. We must awake from our slumber. Those who are handling the sacred things should walk in the light. But we don't see that today. Those who are handling sacred things are walking in the dark. And the light is becoming darkness to them. And how great is that darkness? Some who do not possess moral worth are exalted. They are made leaders. And those who are endeavoring to seek the Lord walk in steps. And people do not even see what they are doing. As the world goes closer and closer to its end, rushing to its perilous end, this danger will become more and more apparent. We must awake. We must wake up to the perils that are opening up around us. We should not sit down and watch. Otherwise, we will be swept. It was by associating with people who were idol worshippers and joining their festivities that the Hebrews were led to sin against God and to bring judgments. And in one day, 28,000 fell. So now, it is by leading the followers of Christ to associate with the ungodly and unite in the amusements that Satan is most successful in his work. He's doing that 
with so much success around the world. What do you see? Christians who have very questionable ringtones on their phones. What do you see? Christians who have very questionable pictures on their walls. What do you see? Christians who send very questionable text messages from their phones. Christians who have terrible pictures on their computers. Christians who listen to all kinds of music. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Come out from among them. Be you separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean. God requires his people now as a great distinction from the things of the world. In customs, in habits, in principles, we should be different. We should show that we are truly children of God and not people who are just trying to fit into the society, but people who are on their way to heaven. I will come your way again. And it is my prayer that God will bless you as you listen to these messages. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on 233-2087-04532 or 0244-235-017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF 595 Adenta Greater Accra Region, Ghana we will expect your feedback. Ghana, voice of hope. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>